All right, so in the last example, we looked at some really simple AI where we could create creatures that chase us and run away from us. Um, here, we're gonna expand on this idea um, and use this uh, thing called a finite state machine, which essentially lets us have a creature that has multiple states depending on its environment, depending on a bunch of different factors. Um, and it may at times chase us or run away from us or do other kinds of behaviors um, based on that environment, which is really cool and um, creates surprisingly complex sort of virtual creatures, behaviors um, based on these rules, basically. Um, so I'll put the links in the description here, but um, the Wikipedia article on this is really good. A lot of detail here, um, as well as this article from Intel on AI for games and another from Tutorials Plus that's really good as well. These are resources I use when putting this together. Um, I will tell you that this example is going to be kind of long. So if you want to just skip ahead and look at the code, it's well annotated. Hopefully you should be able to see it, but I wanted to make sure if you're interested, we can really dig into the details on how this stuff is working. Um, so I've gone ahead. Oh, actually, before we dive into the code, let's talk about um, this idea of states. So here I've listed some examples of states that, um, uh, I don't know if I've said this yet, we're going to make a zombie. So the zombie, <laughs> I don't think I said this, the zombie is going to chase us uh, around the screen. If it gets close enough, it's going to bite us and eat our brains and then run away. Um, so I've gone ahead and created some uh, a list of some states that you might include for a character like this. Idle, aware, intrigued, alert, aggressive, fleeing, or dead. Um, I'm sure you could add lots to this list. And of course, this is just really thinking about like a zombie in a game. Um, you could think of lots of other sort of states that we experience or that animals or creatures experience that maybe have nothing to do with um, fighting, killing, eating, and stuff like that. Um, but uh, I think the first thing for us to do before we dive into code though, is to create what's called a state event table. And um, this is a list of the different states that our creature might have um, and think about what happens when it's in those states. And um, I've gone ahead and written these out for our zombie like this. Um, so it's got four different behaviors. An idle, which will be, um, it's gonna be just sitting there moving around randomly until the player um, gets close enough. If the player does get close enough, it's gonna move towards the player. Um, and then we're gonna have a sort of even closer version where if it gets really close to the player, it's gonna speed up and attack. And then when the attack is finished, it's gonna run away from the player um, to devour your brains basically. Um, so with this in mind, now we can go into code and start thinking about how we wanna write this. And I've created a template here just to get us started. Um, so we can see I've got um, the zombie is this little black circle. I'm the blue circle that moves around with my mouse. Uh, and then in code here, I've got some different speeds so I can control how fast um, it moves in different states. This is gonna make it feel much more complex. Um, I've got its state, which is its current state that it's in. And um, the different states that it can have, I'm defining as numbers. Lots of ways that you could think about doing this, but what I like about this then is when I wanna check the state or change it, I can use a value, the variable name that makes sense. It's not just like a number or something like that. Um, and it lets me, I don't know, more intuitively understand my code. And then I have um, a vector for the player and the zombie that I create in the setup. Um, and so again, we're gonna cover a lot of detail here. If you wanna skip ahead, that's totally cool. Um, and just look at the code and try it for yourself but um, we're gonna do a deep dive and make this work. Um, then in my draw, I'm just setting the player equal to the X and Y position of the mouse and the zombie right now is a fixed position that doesn't change. Um, cool, and that's all the variables we need. The next thing we wanna do is um, change the state of the zombie based on the position of the player. So to do that, I wanna measure the distance and we're gonna use this dist function again from our vector class. And this is gonna measure the distance between these um, two points, these two vectors um, in pixels. And then we wanna have some kind of thresholds met that's gonna change its state. So maybe we can just for now have it idle until we get within a certain range. So we can say if, let's say if the distance is greater than 300, then the state will be equal to idle. Otherwise, Let's have the state be equal to chase. And you can see here the beauty 
of naming these variables at the top, now my state is equal to idle instead of some random number that I have to keep track of or some weird thing like that. It makes it really easy for me to read and understand. Okay, so I've set my state and then depending on the state, and we're gonna add more here in a little bit, but depending on my state, we're gonna change the behavior of the zombie. So I could say if state equals idle, let's make it move randomly. And I will just grab this here. So I'm just adding random um, speed to it. So it's gonna wiggle around. And if I want it to, oh, we don't have a, a state called chase. We have it, it's called attack, right? No, hang on, do we? Seek, that's it, okay, seek. Um, I was getting confused from the last example. Okay, seek. And then we'll say else if state equals seek. Then we want it to move towards our player and we can do this the same way um, we did it before um, in the last example. So I, I'm just gonna grab this again. So we're gonna create the direction by subtracting the two positions. We're gonna normalize it in a range of zero to one. We're gonna multiply that by the speed and then move the zombie in that direction. Um, so really we're just, in this case, having it switch between two states, um, and, but it's really no different than before. So now if my mouse is within a certain distance, it's not gonna do anything. You can see it's randomly walking around. And if I get closer, it's gonna chase after me. And if I move too far, now it's gonna chill out again. It's really cool. Uh, already it feels like it's responding to me um, moving around on the screen. Cool. Um, let's think then, we wanna add these other, um, these other states here. So we want it to be able to attack us if it gets even closer. So we can add that next. We can say, um, where are we at? I'm checking my notes. I wanna make sure I don't forget anything. This is getting a little complicated. Um, so these are our two states here. Uh, we wanna then know if, the, um, if it's close enough, we want it to be seek. So actually we can add this here. Else if uh, the distance is less than or equal to 300, so if it's um, greater than 300, it's going to idle. If it's smaller than that and the distance is less than, or sorry, greater than 100, let's say the state is equal to seek. We could delete this over here. So if it's closer but not super close, we're going to seek else if the distance is um, less than or equal to 100, our state is going to be equal to attack. So if it's greater than 300, it's going to sit still. If it's less than 300, but um, greater than 100, so between those two numbers, we're going to seek. And if it's really close, um, less than 100, it's going to attack us. So then we can add another uh, uh, else statement here, else if state, uh, state equals attack. Um, I'm, and again, I'm just going to grab this here like this. So we're going to do the direction again, same as before, except instead of um, adding the run speed, we're going to add the attack speed like this. And let's try this again. So now if we're within 300 to 100 pixels, it's going to be like this. And if it gets closer, it's going to speed up. Now it's a little hard to see. So let's add one more thing. Um, I'm going to change its color. And the color we can set um, based on its um, its uh, state. Oh my God, sorry, total brain fart here. Okay, so we can set the zombie color if it's idle to black. And if it's seeking us, we can make it a dark red. And if it's attacking us, we can make it a bright red. And then down here, instead of this, we can say zombie color like this. So now it's idling. You can see when it attacks us, it turns this dark red. And when it gets real close, it changes to bright red. This is uh, you know, partly storytelling and also partly just uh, making it clear kind of what's happening on screen. So then the last thing really we wanna add here is to have this um, zombie, when it comes up and touches us, to switch states so that it flees away from us. Um, and let's first just create, uh, well, let's see, where should we go next? I think that we wanna then um, say if the distance 
is less than 20, we want the state to be equal to flea. The problem here though is if the, um, let's say it then starts running away and the next frame, right? So it's moving away and then the next frame we're checking again, the distance and it's within this parameter, it's gonna try to attack us again. We want it to finish fleeing before it's able to attack again. And this is where this gets maybe a little more complicated. Um, and so I think what I wanna do actually is move these guys down here. So if the distance is greater than 300, it's gonna idle. If it's less than 20, it's gonna flee. And I'm gonna say then if we are not fleeing right now, then set the states to be these different chase versions. So again, again, this is a little confusing. If the distance is great enough, it's gonna idle. If it's short enough, it's gonna um, flee away from us. And if we're not currently fleeing, then if the distance is within this one range, we're gonna seek. And if it's within this other, it's going to attack. This is basically, again, just gonna ensure that it doesn't attack us and then, um, you know, or flee away and then immediately attack us again. And then the last thing I think we just need to add is this flee, uh, flee part down here. And that's it. So we just add this. Uh, I've got, yeah, I've got this color being uh, this sort of, actually it's not green. I don't know why it says that. Okay, so then if we move around like this and it attacks us and then it flees away and eventually it's gonna re reach a certain distance where it's able to idle or attack us again. And that's it, that's the whole thing. I know this is a little more complicated and it's quite a lot of if statements, you're gonna see a lot of that. This would be a great uh, thing to wrap up into a class, like a zombie class. So this was all sort of inside there rather than our, in our draw loop. Um, but basically we just define these different states and um, different ways of determining which state this should be in and then how it behaves in those states. And that's it. Um, it's really, yeah, it's really just like the last example, just sort of like expanding it in different ways. Um, I would encourage you to think about, um, yeah, other states that you could add to this, or um, could you wrap this into a class, a zombie class, which I think would work really well um, and maybe be reusable because then you could have a swarm of zombies all with different behaviors. This could be um, a really, really fun thing to make.